again, I don't know how many of you are reading the Torah portion every week. We do have the reading schedule put up for the month, every month on our website. And then on every Wednesday AM, they are uploading a 30 minute approximately. It could be as young as 22 minutes to 28 minutes on average. Um, about the Torah portion every week on a Wednesday, that that is to help you grow, to begin to see Jesus in the Torah, Jesus in these first five books, that Jesus, when he said before Abraham was, he was, he's telling the truth. And we can see him throughout the pages. And um, I really love doing this series. Uh, it's been a passion of mine to finally get it to come to pass. So I'm, I'm hoping that you guys are taking advantage of that. Uh, and then this whole week, things are just kind of really lining up because in the reading in Exodus from this week, we come to um, chapter 33. And in chapter 33, we really begin to see Moses rising up, actively engaging with the Lord, specifically as an intercessor, an intermediary between himself and all of Israel. And as we begin to learn about these things, as we begin to learn about, as Moses learns, what does it mean? Now, there's a lot of engagement that God does with Moses. And, and we'll see it in, in several of the books throughout Leviticus and Numbers. We're going to end up seeing this engagement of how God was instructing, teaching, and, and, and causing what was inside Moses to come out. And that's one of the keys within intercession that is a, is, a, is a blessing for us is the fact that God knows what's in you. God knows what's in your heart that's of him. You know, many times we focus on all of the areas of our life that aren't him. We focus on our sin or we focus on our weaknesses. We focus on our failures and yet I failed again. And yep, oh, and I, yep, I failed again. Yep, yep, I failed again. I'm, and, and that can actually cause us to begin to go on a spiral away from God as we just focus on our failures. Instead, God wants us to, to engage with him in a relationship process that brings out of us how we actually hear his voice. How do we know his character? How, does, how do we know his heart, not just for me, but for the community and the world around me? And so we really get to see that here with Moses. And so this week I said, let us learn how to be intercessors. And it just fits so easily to begin to see the principles of intercession laid out in scripture very easily. So if you want to open up your Bibles or read on the screen, we're going to begin with um, Exodus chapter 33, starting in verse 12. Now Moses said to the Lord, see, you say to me, bring up the, this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. What we begin to see at this very beginning of this interchange between Moses and the Lord is a familiarity. We begin to see that, that he's not just Moses meeting God at the first time with the burning bush in which, you know, he had to take off his shoes and, and he was stammering and, and he didn't, you know, who are you? What is your name? What, what are these things? Instead, he now actually has a process in which he's been talking with the Lord, receiving from the Lord. He's been engaging with God for several years. And now he's got this whole nation that has come all of Israel, they're in the desert. They've left Egypt. They watched the defeat of Pharaoh. They've, they went through the dry land. They came to the bitter water. It became clean. They were hungry. They got quail. They got manna. They got water from the rock. They were, they were there. They, the whole nation heard the out loud voice of God. They saw the thunder and the lightning, the cloud that was burning. God began to give Moses a, a whole list of things to prepare for the people in worship. And now the whole nation is involved. People are artisans and weavers and goldsmiths. And, and people are giving of the resources and hunting and collecting. And, and this is a full nation involved because they're going to learn how to worship God. 
They're going to learn what God really requires of them. There are people still of ignorance. And so the very first principle that we see here is, one, you need to know the heart of God and speak it back to him. Speak back to God what you believe is in his heart or what he said. So God, didn't you say bring this people out? Didn't I bring the people out? But, but I'm stuck. I need more. You said that we have found favor in your sight. Is this true? What does this mean? It, it becomes this, you give back to God what you believe, and then this gives you this space because in this, if you've got it wrong, God can begin to correct you. You know, I think a lot of people, if they actually kind of had this space of like, what has the Lord said, for example, like North Korea? I've got, you know, people are like, God wants to kill all of North Korea. I think, I, I don't, I know. That, I, I, I don't see that in the Bible. Oh, all North Korea should die. Um, no, I, I think the Bible says that they should all be saved. God wants them to live. So, so you can start to know, all right, then there's something wrong in my heart. There's something wrong that needs to be addressed, and, and it can be corrected, and, and it can be fixed. But then at the same time, it can be confirmed. Yes, I am with you. Yes, I do love you. Yes, you have been obedient. Yes, you did lead this people. Yes, I'm going to have favor. But, but there, there needs to be this space, this interaction. So you need to know the heart of God. Now, I'm calling these principles, and I'm not calling them steps. This is not a how-to. There isn't a step one, a step two, a step three. These are principles, meaning that they can come in almost any order. That, that you don't get into an idea of intercession is never supposed to be witchcraft. If you do, then. If you fast. So I remember somebody told me once that the only way you're allowed to hear from God is the first thing you have to do is you have to go to Key the One. So if you don't have Prayer Mountain, you have to go, you have to, go to Prayer Mountain. You have to fast Three days, no food, no water for three days. And only after those three days are you allowed then to seek God to see if you can hear his voice. And I was like, wow, that's intense. But you don't want to turn it into witchcraft. You don't want to believe that if I don't do one pattern, if I don't do one step, if I don't do one thing, then, then God is going to you know, reject me. God's going to reject my prayer. God's going to reject these things. God wants relationship and interaction. He wants honesty, and he wants these things. So principles are to be just, just that, principles of foundations, things that God has. We need to know God's heart if you're going to be an intercessor. Now, it's like, well, why would I want to be an intercessor? Well, Jesus is the great intercessor. He is our intercessor. He is now, you know, that God himself has made the way where we no longer need someone between us and him. And as he intercedes, Holy Spirit is interceding without ceasing inside of you. It says Holy Spirit is praying inside of you without ceasing, without stopping. The Bible doesn't say we pray without ceasing or stopping. It says Holy Spirit is praying without ceasing or stopping. And so if we want to be more like Jesus, then we too would become an intercessor. Because why? I want to look like him. I want to talk like him. I want to see like him. I want to react like him. I don't want to react like me. I don't want to react out of my woundings and out of my hurts. I don't want to react out of my shortcomings, out of my prejudices. I don't want to react out of my conditioning. I wanted something different. I want to know his heart because his heart is perfect. His heart is full of life and joy and all of the fruits of the Spirit. So the intercessor's life is to be then filled with the fruits of the Spirit. So to get God's heart is to be filled with the Spirit of God and the fruit of God. Now, I don't know if about you, but I've known many intercessors. People are like, they're an intercessor. And it's always said like intercessor, like really enunciated, like this means something. 
And, and, I, and I showed up even in some houses of prayer around the world. I've done teaching in various places. And I remember I walked into one house of prayer, and I was there, going to be there for two weeks, teaching for two weeks. And I came in, I said, you know, as soon as I came in here, I immediately knew this was a house of prayer. And they all went, oh, yeah. And I said, you know how I knew? They're like, why? None of you care about your hair, your clothes. Half of you are in your pajamas. And, you're, and they're like, and they're, they're like, and you're serious all the time. All the time. There's no joy. There was no, it's like, what do you do for fun? We, we pray. But what do you do for fun? We pray. We, we pray. Well, what's, for, what's, you know, I was new to the city. I'm like, well, what's fun to do in the city? We don't know. We pray. I, I knew this one person who said that they had been in the house of prayer in Jerusalem for four years. I thought, wow, how amazing of you. You've been in Jerusalem for four years. He goes, yeah. I said, what's your favorite part of Israel? He goes, what do you mean? I said, like, well, you've been in Israel for four years. Like, what's your favorite part? He goes, oh, I haven't seen Israel. I've just been at the house of prayer. I said, you what? He goes, yeah, we, we land. We go immediately to the house of prayer. Other than to the local grocery store, we only were there just to pray. I'm like, four years you've been in the land and you haven't seen it? You haven't seen the people? He's, no, we just pray. I'm like, then why waste all the money to be in Israel? You can just pray at your home in Korea. You don't need to fly to Israel if you're not going to be part of Israel, part of the land. So Moses was part of the people. He was going to be living with the people and, and, and in these things, and he's in this relationship with God. He wants the heart of God. But to get the heart of God, you need the Spirit. And the Spirit is full of all the fruits, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. All these things need to be coming out of you. It is not to lock yourself in a prayer closet fasting and praying all of the time. That is not what an intercessor is. That is just what some people choose to make intercession into. Let's continue. Verse 13. Now therefore, Moses is still speaking, if I have found favor in your sight, please show me now your ways that I may know you in order to find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. So principle two, simple, ask for God's wisdom. It's better to ask for God's wisdom than to pray for your own wisdom. Sometimes you think you already know. How many of you thought you knew the solution to something, so you just prayed for that direction? And how many of you know that sometimes that leads to failure? Or sometimes we call like witchcraft prayer where you start praying in, you want to like manipulate God with your prayers. It's just easier to simply say, Lord, give me your wisdom. Show us your ways. Show us how to do. And he is faithful. He is faithful. And verse 14, and he said, God spoke. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Isn't that an unusual thing? Lord, how do you know? How do we know? I will go with you, and I'm going to give you rest. Rest? We're, we're a nation newly out of Egypt. We were slaves. There's so much to do. I will give you shalom. I will give you shabbat. I will give you rest. And so it's, this is one of the key values for our community is that we highly, highly encourage everybody to have at least one day of rest a week, that this is a principle of God overall, that we, God has called us to have a day of rest. He wants us to be a people who are not burnt out. Korea is bali, 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 bali. And yet, what's the end result? Broken families unprecedented brain hemorrhages, cancers, ulcers, all these things. So we need to be a people of rest, a people who come back. 
But for the intercession in this principle is we need to then listen for an answer. If we ask God, we need to be a people who listen. You don't just rhetorically say, God, show me your ways. Oh, Lord, show me your ways. I need to know your ways. God, your ways are going to pass before me. Your ways are good ways. Oh, Lord, your ways are good. Okay, God's, good. God's ways are good. They need to stop. Take a breather. Lord, I need to know your ways. Now, God's ways are infinite. So what we're really asking is for wisdom in this area that we have his heart for. This thing that he's given us his heart. Lord, what are your ways? All right, my presence will go with you. I will give you rest. Listen for an answer. And he said to him, Moses said to God, this is, a, this is a big problem for Koreans and English because it's a whole bunch of pronouns. If your presence will not go with me, do not bring us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? It is not, if, if, is it not in your going with us so that we are distinct, I and your people, from every other people in the face of the earth. Principle four, intercession isn't just for yourself. It includes others. There are times to pray for yourself, to give your prayer need to the Lord. Ask of God. The Lord says that. Ask of him and he will do for you. That's one aspect of it. But intercession is something else. The very definition of intercessor is the mediator, is that it needs to go beyond you. You need to be including others. You need to realize that you're, you're joining a group of people. You are not the sole person even praying for this topic. You might be the only person in this room praying for that topic, but there are people in this nation. There are people around the world. We need to realize that intercession is not a, an I thing. Intercession is a we. Lord, help us. Lord, help them. Lord, it, it goes beyond yourself. And it must go beyond yourself. And verse 17, the Lord said to Moses, this very thing that you have spoken, I will do for you. You have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, please show me your glory. And God said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and you will proclaim and will proclaim before you my name, the Lord. That's yod heh vav -Hey, the actual name of God. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But he said, you cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. So this is a furthering of the dialogue. This is the furthering of the process. It's, it's going, Lord, will you go before us? Will you go with us? Will you declare your ways? We want to be your representatives to all the people of the world. We want to be something more. How will this happen? And God's like, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to show you favor. I'm going to do these things. And then Moses kicks it up a notch. Now I want to see your glory. And it's completely okay. It's okay to ask for revival. It's okay to ask for outpouring. It's okay to ask for a manifest presence of the Lord. It's okay to ask for signs. It's okay to ask for all of these things. But principle five says, you can ask anything and God can say yes or God can say no or God can give you conditions. Intercession and relationship is not manipulation. You cannot manipulate God. You cannot manipulate God into answering you. You cannot manipulate God to give you the answer that you need or require or that you think you need or that you want. But you can ask him anything if in your heart you allow God to say no. Or, but, however, if, 
There's lots of things. Intercession is about maturity. It's about growing in relationship. It's about growing in understanding. This, this, goes, this goes beyond his, just the grace of salvation. We don't come into it to ch- achieve our place, but because of our rights as sons and daughters, because of our rights as his priests, because of our rights as his children, as his beloved, we then go and we seek him and, and, and we, we declare to him. And verse 21 says, The Lord said it, Behold, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. How many of you want that? How many of you wished you could have been there? I know, right? Like, and you can find a lot of symbolism in these things about hiding in the cleft of the rock and wanting to see the Lord. Principle six, when wanting something, when you're wanting something, Do what God says. Obey him, his ways, and his instructions. Yeah, that's kind of... (laughs) When wanting something, do what God says. Obey him, his ways, and his instructions. Because he wants you to live. He wants you to live. He wants you to live. Can you imagine, after all of this, after all of these things, after all of the experiences that Moses has already had, I want to see your glory. I want to have this experience with you. I want to have this encounter with you. And this is the encounter, and this is the amazing thing that, you know, Moses wasn't allowed to see the face of the Lord. But we get to see the face of Jesus. Holy Spirit reveals it in you and all around you. If your heart is open, you get to have this encounter with God every single day. Every day, creation cries out and speaks to the glory of the Lord. Every day, you can have an encounter with with the Lord. Every day you can have this intimacy. And this is one of the other, the, the, I didn't write this down as a principle, but to be able to keep fresh in your prayer, to not get jaded or, or to feel like, you know, so frustrated that your prayers, like, where are my prayers going? There are people who have been praying for this nation for decades and decades and decades, waiting and believing and hoping for the next wave, the next revival, the next thing that God's going to do, and yet they still wait and they still pray. So we need to have our own intimacy with the Lord, our own encounters with God. But we don't, we don't, make them conditional upon our intercession. But without intimacy of relationship, your intercession will grow stale. Without intimacy of relationship, your intercession will become egocentric or will become more manipulative or will become more dead. So it is this intimacy with the Lord and this encounter that you are responsible for your constant, your health with the Lord, your relationship with the Lord. And it's one of the reasons we gather together. We gather together as a people in a community that we can encourage one another, that we can see Jesus in one another, that, that when I'm going through the downtime, I can see him on your face, and I know, yes, the Lord is here. The Lord in the presence of God is here. But it's also my responsibility to make sure that I'm cultivating my daily, my daily bread with the Lord, that I'm cultivating my daily relationship with him. And sure enough, God prepared Moses. And he stuck them in the cleft of the rock. 
And I wish I knew. How did he cover his face? He's like, I'm going to put my hand, like, I'm going to, like, who did this? In verse 34, chapter 34, verses 5. From verse 5, the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. Now, in English, this sounds really, like, simple, right? Oh, he stood there with him, and he proclaimed the name of the Lord. Actually, in Hebrew, this is a really complicated, confusing, and rabbis don't want to even hear about this, because what it says is that the Lord went before the Lord, proclaiming the name of the Lord. It's like, wait, how could God go before God proclaiming the name of God? There's this already multiple functioning aspect. So is this Jesus or the Holy Spirit or like, or you know, there's so much about God that we don't know and don't understand, but we see this oneness of God yet has multiple expressions. And this is one of these most amazing places for that. So some people have an encounter with Jesus. Anybody here have an encounter actually with Jesus? Well, yeah, it's okay. Be proud. Yes. I've talked about mine all the time. You guys can talk about yours next. Like, yeah. How many of you had an encounter with Holy Spirit? Like, you know, Holy Spirit. Okay. How many of you just encountered God, Father, Jesus. You all, you all encountered him one way or another because if, if you know Jesus, Holy Spirit has revealed him to you. But we've had these different kinds of encounters. So Moses is having this amazing encounter. So the Lord went before the Lord, just like when David said, I say it to my Lord about his Lord. Wait, who is above the king? You know, so this is this whole aspect. So Jesus is present here. I'm wondering if he wasn't allowed to see his face, but I'm wondering that when Jesus was on the mountain and he had the mountain of transfiguration and then Elijah and Moses showed up and Moses was like, it's you. You're the one who went before the Lord. I'm, I'm sure. I'm just sure that sometimes like Moses, like he had to wait before he could even recognize who Jesus was. This is just my thoughts, by the way. You can't prove any of this. We can all ask him when we get there. Come up with your own theories. We can discuss during small group. But the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. And Moses quickly bowed the head towards the earth and worshipped. Principle seven, expect to learn more about God and his heart in order to keep interceding. The answer to one prayer is never the end. Intercession is an ongoing process. It won't end. And this right here, you should all highlight this in your Bible bookmark it, do whatever you need to on your phone, because in here is a huge portion, huge. How do I know I'm hearing God correctly? Come here to these few verses and see, does this line up with God's character? With what God is having us pray and seek and what I'm trying to, to relay into what God is causing inside of me. If it you know, comes up in here of what the Lord is releasing in verse 9, and, and he said, this is Moses speaking, if, I have na if now I have found favor in your sight, O Lord, please let the Lord go in the midst of us, for it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. He just has this encounter. He has this huge encounter. Let your glory pass before me. Whoa, Jesus. Whoa, Holy Spirit. Whoa, living God. The 
intercessor then takes the experience and pushes the prayer forward. He doesn't just take it and go, yes! And this has been one of the problems, honestly, within the spirit-filled movement is that we've had encounters with God and we were all, yes, this shows God is with me. Instead of allowing the experience to push us forward into intercession, pushing us forward into greater humility, pushing us forward into representing the, the character and nature of God more, we stopped and people relished in the outpourings, relished in the manifestation of God. But we are never meant to stop and build the altar. Because even when the disciples on Mount of Transfiguration are like, hey, let's build an altar. Jesus is like, let's go. You don't need to stop and build an altar to Moses and Elijah and me in this place. You don't need to create this and make it an idol situation. Don't turn an encounter into an idol. Expect to learn more about the heart of God. And as he prayed, principle eight says, no need to hide your face from the Lord. Be as real and honest as you can. God is interested in building relationship with you. The only person you're deceiving is yourself. God knows far more than you could ever tell him. The reality. We're a stiff-necked people. We're a sinful people. We're full of iniquity. We need your help. We need your forgiveness. We're going to drown in our sin, but we need your presence. We need your presence. Come, Lord, and be with us. Come, Lord, into this situation. When you're praying for a government, when you're praying for a people, when you're praying into hard situations, when you're praying for social justice, when you're praying for the things that are breaking God's heart and we're asking God to come in, do we, do we not realize what that means? When you say, God, I want you to reveal your glory, do you know what that means? It means that there's going to be exposure of sin, exposure of hearts, and there's one of two ways of dealing with that. You can either like, capture the woman in the act of adultery and bring her to the feet of Jesus and say, stone her. She's keeping the glory of God from being here. Or you can fall on your face and say, I am a sinner. Isaiah, I am a man of woeful tongue, of, of bad lips. Purge me of my sin. And he takes the coal and he puts it to his lips and he purged him of his sin. A prayer for the nation is as much as a prayer for yourself in that God's also going to deal with you and with what's in your own heart. Don't hide. Don't sugarcoat. Lord, I, how many prayer meetings I've been in? There's been no nation like Korea. So what? The sin is before the Lord. And he knows it. And just acknowledging it acknowledges I know it. And it removes that barrier of saying, I am willing to hear from you of how to correct this, how to change. First in myself. And then to help others in this city, not for condemnation, but for freedom. Not to make people into humiliation and slaves, but to bring people freedom. To create a safe place and a safe community. And he said, behold, God is speaking. I am making a covenant. Before all your people, I will do marvels such as not been seen, have not been created in all the earth or in any nation." And all the people among whom you are shall see the work of the Lord, for it is an awesome thing that I will do with you. The final principle for now. Remember the promises, covenants, and sayings of the Lord so we can pray them back to God and remind ourselves of what the Lord is going to continue to do. This is why people do research 
can do spiritual research to remember what has the Lord said? What has the Lord promised? What did the Lord promise in, in Wonsan in North Korea at the very first seminary where the revival broke out before Pyongyang in 1907? What did God say when the revival broke out in Pyongyang in 1907? What did God say as it traveled all the way down the whole peninsula? What did the Lord say as the people were crying out and praying? What happened in the secret prayer meetings while the Japanese had come and, and began to colonize? What happened during the wars? What's happening even now? What are the promises that God has made to students and children and widows and old men? God has made so many promises and he wants to fulfill his promises. And he will fulfill his promises. Amen? God's made promises to us. Crossway. We're founded on mission. We're founded on a people who are loved by God. A people who can then love God. And then we love each other. This is what we're founded upon and, and from this that we knew that God was going to raise up our heart for the widows and the orphans and for the oppressed. We know that God's calling us to be a light both here and abroad. We know that God wants us to be involved in every single sphere of Korean society. That we want to see the Daniels and the Josephs and the Esthers and the Deborahs raised up in this land. We want to see the hidden people and we want to see the Gideons and the Davids and, and we want to see... Ooh. All right. What is that? Okay. Thank you very much. It's decorative. Even the decoration... <laughs> It's okay. But God has promises for us. God has promises for you. God has promises for your families. God has promises for, for your nations. And for you who are Koreans, God has put nations and people on your hearts, issues on your hearts. But God wants us to be a healthy people here. And so we're going to have a time of, of praying, of blessing each other, of praying with each other. I want to encourage you guys to, that we're going to begin to worship and, and then in the worship we're going to go into a time of prayer where you guys can gather in three or four. I say that because I see there's one and I know there's some of you that are two. But yeah, if that way you're three and four, you have to kind of go beyond your normal group just to pray with each other, to bless each other, to hear God. This isn't about asking each other's prayer request. Okay? That, that, we can do that during small group. Or you can do it before service, after service. We, we encourage you to send your prayer request. But the, the intercession for each other is to bless. Is to bless. the melody you surround me with the song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Oh.
From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called me near. I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am I'm a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. are very compact so you can get out of the row a little bit and there's lots of room over here on the left and in the front and to the right
rescued me so I could stand and say, I am a child of God. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect Rescued me so I could stand and say, I am a child of God. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me. So I could stand and say, I am a child of God. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me. So I could stand and say, I am a child of God. The stand, you split the sea so I could walk right through. So, Lord, we bless all those who are at home right now, those who are watching on YouTube. May you know that the Lord is with you too, that God is watching over you. The Lord is here to encourage you. The Lord is going to cause you to rise up to be his light. That you are called to be one in the place that you are. To be a reflection of the glory of God. The truths and the promises that he has for you. I pray that you would be blessed. I pray that your week would be blessed. I pray that blessings would flow into you and through you. That the promises of the Lord that he's made to you and to your mothers and your fathers the promises he's made to your children, that you would see them come to pass, that the Lord would put into you a steadfast heart to be able to stand and to pray, to intercede. Lord, bless those. Bless all those, Lord God. May you know that you are a blessing. child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Let's sing this together. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Let's lift up just our voices. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am child of God. 
May you continue in prayer as you need. But Lord, may you bless the people, causing your face to shine upon them and being gracious to them. May the Lord lift up his countenance to you all and give great shalom and great peace. In the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, who's the Prince of Peace, be blessed. Amen.